Hi, this is Andy, KE4GKP, and welcome back to the Ham Whisperer, and lesson three in preparation for the Technician Operator Element 2 exam to get your Technician Class Amateur Radio License. Without further ado, let's get going. The T1C section covers operator classes and station call signs, the call sign system, international communications, reciprocal operation, station license and licensees, places where the amateur service is regulated by the FCC, the ULS system, license term, renewal, and grace periods. You will probably see one question on the technician operator exam from this section. All right, let's get started. Which type of call sign has a single letter in both the prefix and suffix? Now, the answer to this one is special event call sign, but there's two types of call signs that you're going to need to know about for the technician exam. One is special event call signs, and the other one's just an average run-of-the-mill operator call sign. An example of a special event call sign is K1A. It's assigned by the FCC to identify stations participating in special events. What you need to remember is a single prefix letter, a number, and then a single letter in the suffix. Which of the following is a valid U.S. amateur radio call sign? Well, a valid call sign in the U.S. generally begins with a K or a W. The answer on the exam the answer begins with a W. This is often but not always followed by a second letter and then a single number and that single number reflects what region in the United States that uh, call sign is registered at. The suffix could be two or three letters and it could be it's used to further identify who the operator is. Mine for example is KE4GKP. You saw the K is a US call sign. The 4 is the mid mid-Atlantic region where I operate out of and GKP is just letters to help identify me. One of my mentors is W1 Zip Papa Baker and he works out of New England which is the one designator. What types of international communications are permitted by an FCC licensed amateur station? Well the answer is communications incidental to the purposes of the amateur service and remarks of a personal character. Now keep in mind that international regulation for amateur service is not always as savvy as the FCC's and some international communications on the amateur bands could be a little bit shady compared to what you would see in the United States so just be careful what you're saying. When are you allowed to operate your amateur station in a foreign country? Well it's a pretty simple answer it's when the foreign country authorizes it. If you think you want to operate outside the United States or going on a long trip abroad check out the ARRL website and they have some good information on how to get licenses or how to get authorization in foreign countries. Which of the following is a vanity call sign which a technician class amateur operator might select if available? The answer is K1XXX and so basically there's three different possibilities that you can choose from and in, in all of the above. The K1XXX is the one that would go towards a technician. It falls into that two by three type format where you have a letter or two followed by a number and then a three letter suffix. The only other legitimate answer on the exam is W1XX and that's for higher level um, license classes. But for a technician class, the answer is K1XXX. From which of the following may an FCC licensed amateur station transmit in addition to places where the FCC regulates communications? Essentially, if you're on a boat in the middle of international waters and you're a licensed ham, and that boat is registered in the United States, you can transmit as much as the Part 97 will allow. So transmit away, just don't break the rules. What may result when correspondence from the FCC is returned as undeliverable because the grantee failed to provide the correct mailing address? Well, first of all, you shouldn't be getting too much mail from the FCC. The license should be the only thing you get. If you're getting more mail, you're probably doing something wrong. And if they can't get a hold of you, they will suspend or revoke your license. So keep your address up to date. What is the normal term for an FCC issued primary station operator license grant? The answer is 10 years. So your license, once you get it, is good for 10 years, after which you have to renew it. Now there's a two year grace period after which, which we'll get into the next question. Also, if you upgrade your license within that 10 year period, the clock automatically starts over. So just kind of keep an eye on how old your license is. What is the grace period following the expiration of an amateur license within which the license may be renewed? You have two years following the expiration of a license to get it renewed before you have to start from scratch essentially. 
Now, you're not allowed to operate during that two-year grace period because your license is invalid, but you do have two years to get it renewed with the FCC. How soon after passing the examination for your first amateur radio license may you operate a transmitter on an amateur service frequency? The answer is as soon as your operator station license grant appears in the FCC license database. Now this ULS database is a web-based program basically after you pass the exam your information is sent to it and then, then it registers. So as soon as you're in that you're legal. Um, I have a link to that database at hamwhisper.com or hamwhisper.blogspot.com if you're interested, but you can start operating as soon as your license appears in the ULS database. If your license is expired and is still within the allowable grace period, may you continue to operate a transmitter on amateur service frequencies? The answer is absolutely not. Your license is not valid. You are not allowed to transmit. Now, there's only one no answer in the four possible answers for this question on the exam? The answer is no. Who may select a desired call sign under the vanity call sign rules? The answer is any licensed amateur. Uh, there's an application process and uh, basically a search engine to see if your call sign, your desired call sign has been taken, but the bottom line is that you have to have a, a license first before you can request a call sign. So your initial call sign is going to be whatever you get issued by the FCC. Once you receive that, you can go back and ask for another one. So the answer is who can select a desired call for a vanity call sign is any licensed amateur. For which license classes are new licenses currently available from the FCC? The answer is Technician, General, and Amateur Extra. There used to be Novice and Advanced classes, so Novice before Technician and then Advanced between General and Extra um, licenses available. However, the FCC stopped these licenses, so no new Novice or Advanced licenses will be issued. The only current licenses available are Technician, General, and Amateur Extra class licenses. Who may select a vanity call sign for a club station? The answer is only the person named as trustee on the club station license grant. And this is a pretty simple answer. So basically, the, the trustee of a club license grant is the person who is administratively responsible for that station to the FCC. So only they are allowed to request a vanity call sign for that club station. So who may select a vanity call sign for a club station? Only the person named as trustee on the club station license grant. And now it's time for the T1C quiz. So grab a pen and paper, number 1 through 14. I will go through the answers pretty quick, or the questions rather, pretty quick. Um, so if you need more time, just pause the video. When you're done, you can go to hamwhisper.com to check your answers. The answers can be found under the exam answers page under the T1C section. Good luck, and let's get started. Question 1. Which type of call sign has a single letter in both the prefix and suffix A. Vanity B sequential, C, special event, or D, in memoriam. Question two, which of the following is a valid U.S. amateur radio station call sign? A, KMA 3505, B, W3ABC, C, KDKA, or D, 11Q1176? Question three, what types of international communications are permitted by an FCC licensed amateur station? A, Communications incidental to the purposes of the amateur service and remarks of a personal character. B. Communications incidental to conducting business or remarks of a personal nature. C. Only communications incidental to contest exchanges and all other communications are prohibited. Or D. Any communications that would be permitted on an international broadcast station. Question 4. When are you allowed to operate your amateur station in a foreign country? A. When the foreign country authorizes it. B when there is mutual agreement allowing third-party communications, C, when authorization permits amateur communication in a foreign language, or D, when you are communicating with non-licensed individuals in another country. Question 5. Which of the following is a vanity call sign which a technician class amateur operator might select if available? A, K1XXX, B, KA1X, C, W1XX, or D, all of these choices are correct. Question 6. From which of the following may an FCC licensed amateur station transmit in addition to places where the FCC regulates communications? A, from within any country that belongs to the International Telecommunications Union. B, from within any country that is a member of the United Nations. C, from anywhere within the ITU regions 2 and 3. Or D, from any vessel or craft located in international waters and documented or registered in the United States. Question 7. 
What may result when correspondence from the FCC is returned as undeliverable because the grantee failed to provide the correct mailing address? A. Fine or imprisonment. B. Revocation of the station license or suspension of the operator license. C. Require the licensee to be reexamined. Or D. A reduction of one rank in operator class. Question 8. What is the normal term for an FCC-issued primary station operator license grant? A. 5 years. B. Life. C. 10 years. D. 20 years. Question 9. What is the grace period following the expiration of an amateur license within which the license may be renewed? A. 2 years. B. 3 years. C. 5 years. D. 10 years. Question 10. How soon may you operate a transmitter on an amateur service frequency after you pass the examination required for your first amateur radio license? A. Immediately. B. 30 days after the test date. C. As soon as your name and call sign appear in the FCC's ULS database. Or D. You must wait until you receive your license in the mail from the FCC. And question 11. If your license is expired and is still within the allowable grace period, May you continue to operate a transmitter on amateur surface frequencies? A. No. Transmitting is not allowed until the ULS database shows that the license has been renewed. B. Yes, but only if you identify using the suffix GP. C. Yes, but only during authorized nets. D. Yes, for up to two years. Question 12. Who may select a desired call sign under the vanity call sign rules? A. Only licensed amateurs with general or extra class licenses. B. Only licensed amateurs with an extra class license. C. Only an amateur licensee who has been licensed continuously for more than 10 years. Or D. Any licensed amateur. Question 13. For which license classes are new licenses currently available from the FCC? A. Novice, Technician, General, Advanced. B. Technician, Technician Plus, General, Advanced. C. Novice, Technician Plus, General, Advanced or D, Technician, General, Amateur Extra. Question 14. Who may select a vanity call sign for a club station? A, any extra class member of the club, B, any member of the club, C, any officer of the club, or D, only the person named as trustee on the club station license grant. And that's it. Now that you're done with the quiz, go to hamwhisper.com and check your answers. You can find them under the exam answers page under the T1C section. Until next time, in lesson four, this is Andy, KE4GKP, saying 73s, and I hope to hear you on the air soon.